What is up, you guys? It's Twinless Twin, and I am here today with artist talent Phoenix. This is maybe one of the most busted decks I've ever registered at a big event, and I'm really excited to bring this gameplay to you. I already released my complete guide on the deck, which goes through how to build the deck, you know, different key heuristics and gameplay. I'm adding in keep mulligans, sideboarding for all the top matchups you might expect. So if your RC is still coming up or you've got another big pioneer event, definitely check out that guide. But for today, we're just going to play it through a league. Um, and this is the new list that I've landed on. So <clears throat> I can talk a little bit about some of the, the interesting flex slot card choices. Um, I think that, you know, the Brazen Borrower and the Into the Flood Maw are really important. There are a lot of decks that are um, using non-creature permanents, so you want to have ways to interact with those. High Noon is a big one, um, but also the Incarnation deck ended up being pretty popular. And then there's also decks like the uh, Mono Black Demon deck, where your damage base removal doesn't line up very well into their, you know, six toughness creatures, so these cards also play fine there. Um, and then Bounce Spells are just, you know, actually pretty reasonable against the Prowess deck. Uh, makes it really awkward for them to time their pump spells. Um, other than that, we've got four Artist Talent, two Prof, Edict's mem Eidetic Memory. Um, we have two Spell Pierce. I almost want to go up to a third Spell Pierce, but one thing that I really stand by with this deck is you don't want too much uh, reactive spells. You're really trying to use your mana every single turn and kind of churn through your engine of a deck. So that third spell pierce, um, I think, might end up being a little costly. But I think it's definitely still a consideration um, if the meta continues to trend towards some of those decks where spell pierce is strongest. Uh, in the sideboard, we added in a null. Uh, that card is just great against a, a lot of decks, but I think that, you know, like the Fable decks come to mind. Um, they'll also be sideboarding in Hearse. The Incarnation decks, this card is just an all-star. Uh, th there's really a lot of decks you can board a null in versus. Um, we've also got the Prismari Commands. The Shatter is really valuable, but also just a good flexible removal spell you can board in quite a bit. Banefire might be a, a, a head-scratching one, but you can guess that the non-counterable piece is uh, the really valuable piece, and the, the goal is just to cast a big Banefire against blue-white for a lot of damage. Um, it makes them have to play much more defensively uh, because you know at some point if you get them down to around eight to ten life uh, they know they're going to die to bane fire before they can actually really realistically beat you um all right yeah let's just go ahead and get into it i i go you know much more in depth in the in the article but for now that's kind of a high level view of some of the card choices so artist talent i mean i think the games will Oh, I'm in a league right now. This is not with Artist Talent. So I'm going to concede this match and then join a new league. Um, <laughs> I didn't realize that was the case. Okay. So now let's get into it with this Artist Talent deck. Um. You're going to see the card in action. I think that it really lets you play very aggressively. It lets you maximize your, your Phoenixes and your Treasure Cruises, which I think is super valuable. Um, and yeah, we'll just we'll just kind of prove, prove the gameplay for itself. Okay, so one thing is nice in Open Deck List, if you are preparing for that, uh, Open Deck List is super helpful for Phoenix. Um, you know, like understanding how good each of your cards are going to be. This hand is a little bit questionable. I mean, we don't know how these spells will be, uh, specifically the Fiery Impulse. And we do have the one can trip, but two cruises. I mean, the cruises will take a while to, to cast, but I still think it's a keep. I mean, leaning on, you know, we have this can trip, plenty of, of cycling in the deck. Okay, and they're playing, it looks like the green-white deck here. Um, I haven't played too much against it. I think my my thought right now is I don't want to be killing the Llanowar Elves. They have, you know, I don't know if we have enough removal to really, like, afford to kill the Llanowar Elf, essentially. When we need to be killing their Thalia, we need to be killing their Archons uh, of Amiria to, to even have a chance in the game. But that could that could be very well wrong. Um, 
So take that with a grain of salt. But if they do play Archon here, it's awkward the River Glide pathway will enter tap, so it's going to be pretty slow. Hmm. They just pass here, which makes me think they have the uh, Interrupter. And I don't really know if we're even forced to do anything here. One thing we could do, just for some tempo, and because we know we want to kind of get cards into the yard and we have these cruises to, to get back our cards we could just like bounce this land where elves here if they if we assume they like have a three drop they'll probably end up just interrupting this into the flood maw but um like bouncing this might make it awkward they want to play a three drop and then a four drop kind of i kind of like that play Truth be told, I haven't played much of this matchup. I did face it once at the RC, but it was my first time seeing the deck. Um, if we're queuing into this deck a lot, I'm definitely going to be recommending that you add a second Anger of the Gods bodyguard. Okay, that's fine. If they want to exile their Llanowar Elf, that's fine. I mean, I'll take two damage for the next five to seven turns and not care at all. So as far as I'm concerned, this is actually just better for me than, than bouncing it to their hand, probably. Um, they might, yeah, we'll see. Maybe they're now considering that. They're like, well, is this actually uh, good for me or, or not? Um, but yeah, if they want to bodyguard the elf, be my guest. And yeah, like the other option was just consider um, looking for an artist talent would be awesome. But I was pretty afraid. I mean, if I consider they even interrupter, I guess then I can like bounce the elf or something or just pass with crew with a borrower. Up. There's there's maybe some some merit to that line as well. But you see, like, a hand like this, if we had Artist Talent on two, immediately, like, you get to then untap on three, consider, discard, Fiery Impulse, discard, probably cast Cruise. It's that easy. So they do target the Lenore Elves. Okay. Uh, so what we have to think through here is, I think there's like a decent chance we might put Blue Artist Talent. Perfect. I think we want to take the talent here and put this on red. Now we're set up to kill an Archon if they play that. Um, if they just pass again, we can pretty, we can read them pretty well for the even Interrupter and kind of play around that and make it a bad, you know, turn for them. Probably just passing back. Like we definitely don't want to run the Artist Talent into the even Interrupter here. Missing on the land drop does stink.
I wonder if we had let on consider if they would have let that go. Maybe. It could have been it could have been worth trying just for the the chance of hitting. Hitting our third land would have been pretty huge. We've got a lot of spells worth of, you know, mana here, so we want to hit our next three land drops probably <laughs> at this point. And here they could have company even, which would be We can't really wait, you know, forever, so let's see. Bidding opt. Drawing a second red source is somewhat annoying. Uh, though I guess there is the benefit of... Okay, well, I think now let's, let's, you know, if they have the interrupted this turn, it means at least they're not casting company if that's what they have. If they are casting, okay, they do have the interrupter. Yep. On the Aven interrupter. And by the way, if we kill this Aven interrupter, I think we just get to cast the artist talent for free. So that's pretty nice. I think we actually probably should just kill the interrupter now to make sure we uh, we get that option. my artist talent. I think they're deciding on collected company, it seems like which is scary. They're thinking if they want to company here. Okay, I think. Let's think about this. We do need to be careful about, you know, being able to cast three spells down the line. Second artist talent is kind of interesting. I mean, if we hit a land or a cantrip, we have a decent chance of cruising. It also helps if they like skyclave our first one, then we get a second one. But Prof's eidetic memory lets us get an extra look for that land, which does feel pretty valuable. I guess the artist talent lets us hit a cantrip though, which we've got, you know, nine of those. I think I like the second talent here. Of course, we're gonna ditch the bird. So now they get to, you know, collected company. Okay, we hit another treasure cruise. Awesome. <laughs> when I say awesome, I don't mean that. Um, oh, I guess they just had nothing. So they were kind of bluffing us. They're just flooding. Um, okay, that works. So here I think I'm definitely ditching a cruise first and then we'll see what I ditch second. All right, I think I'm okay ditching this land. I expect to draw into more lands. I usually loop the lands away somewhat aggressively um, knowing that we're probably gonna find more. Okay. Do we want to play the Spire Bluff? No, we're going to loop the Spire Bluff away and just play like Odawara next turn. 
Do we want to cruise here? Yeah, I think so. I guess, do we want to hold up? Yeah, in case we find the removal spell, we'll hold that up. We're not gonna be able to trigger the, the bird this turn, but. Oh, did they find something here? They found uh, another Aven Interrupter? Okay. So it's plotted. We have to pay two for it next turn. I think the Odawara is better than the Steam Vents. Like, okay, okay, yeah, we already did that. Um, but paying two is fine for the cruise. I think I'll start discarding this borrower, and now we can discard the sleight of hand. Draw three. I guess sleight of hand, discard this land, discard this opt. Let's grab a land. We should we should cruise here so that we have axe up still. I was gonna free the Fey, but I, I think that that's bad. Taking down axe, I mean, it gives us like it opens up opportunities for us to just lose. Okay, now we can axe something and get another bird. Yeah, I'm gonna continue to loot away these considers. Uh, I don't know if we need another pick lock, actually. Yeah, I think I'm okay discarding a pick lock here. Okay, so these birds come back. Yeah, unfortunately you can't profs onto a bird. I feel like if they had company, they would have already cast it, so I'm putting them on pretty much nothing here. Should I leave a bird back just to be careful of company? If they had company, I think that they really should have played it right away on their turn. I'm not gonna respect it because I mean, I do think actually we probably are like nearly locked to win this game the more turns it goes, so respecting it could have been fine there. Okay, so I'm gonna pull up this list just to get an idea of what they're working with. So I'm seeing Sideboard, probably two unlicensed hearse. Maybe some portable holes. I'm seeing uh, Skyclave, Enduring Innocence, Aven Interrupter, Archon, Thalia, all the good stuff. So the Brotherhood Zen is definitely coming in. I think that Spell Pierce probably has to come out. I mean, though, it does hit their companies and their hearses. How good do we think Prof's Eidetic Memory is? I think it's probably pretty good. Probably don't need Into the Flood Knot or Brazen Borrower. The Bounce Spells just don't seem... I mean, I guess bouncing a... Uh, Archon of Amiria specifically seems fine, but the other cards don't seem great to bounce. Okay, so we could try something like this. I 
I kind of sold myself on the spell pierces. Hidden Company is pretty valuable, and then they're bringing in probably a couple more non-creature spells. Maybe it's just like one spell pierce so you don't draw two. Bring in another Prismari. How good is Prismari really? is actually playable like a 3-1 trades with Archon does Archon make creatures enter tapped? non-basic lands okay bar is probably fine Enduring Innocence is a big problem, I think, um, and I'm not really sure what the best fix is, like Anger of the Gods is an option, for sure. I guess. Is there any reason to shock this? I don't think there's any card I would actually be killing. Or maybe I am killing the Elvish Mystic here this time. Because we have our artist talent, so we want to buy time. Hope they don't have Thalia or Curse. It's kind of gross. Like, I don't want to get my talent even interpreted, but then if they just have the... Skyclave, it doesn't really matter. I'm gonna stick with my plan of not killing the Elvish Mystic. I think the difference between this deck and like the green deck is the green deck is super explosive, whereas this deck is probably just going to be casting one spell a turn anyways, even with the Elvish Mystic. Now, if they miss a land drop, I'm going to kill these fuckers for sure. They just, they kept a one lander? Okay. I will kill both of your elves. I accept. That's a reason to kill the elves. <laughs> and I think that um, if they play the second elf there, that makes me think they don't have Thalia either. Okay, and we win the match. I mean, next turn we had, like, Artist Talent, Opt, Find the Consider, like, Mill that, Draw Prismaria. Yeah, we were going to be in pretty nice shape. That green-white deck does seem, I think, tricky for Phoenix, potentially. Um, they have the, the Skyclaves, which answer your artist talent. They have Aven Interrupter, but I think the most important cards are probably like Archon of Amiria and Thalia. Both seem really annoying, so... They just really disrupt your plan. Alright, Yorion. I am going to keep this hand against Yorion. Um, and we have like the Flood Maw to answer a High Noon, we also have Pierce, 
I've hard cast a lot of phoenixes against uh, blue white, but also oh, it's enchanties. It looks like. Um, I think we can top this in the sleight of hand here. Take the profs. Don't really want. Shock and pass. I'll pierce and up the beanstalk, otherwise, just opt is fine. Cavern of Souls? I don't know what we're playing against anymore. <laughs> Naming Avatar. And then they play. Getting back glass pool mimic. Or they choose not to use it. Okay. I'm not sure I know what's going on here. Oh, I hate bottoming phoenixes, but I think with the one already in hand and like. Yeah, I think we do want to bottom this one. Oh, see? If I topped it, this would have had the artist talent. I don't really know what my opponent is up to, but I am kind of scared. <laughs> I'm playing a lot of uncounterable avatars. As if I could counter them anyways, to be honest, but. Start with the free the fey. Find opt. Opt. And then I guess do we want to bounce a creature here to get our Phoenix back? Probably. scared of incarnation. I really want the phoenix back because I'm hoping to maybe load it up with a profs plus artist talent next turn, but I really am kind of going blind against what we're up against here. I guess we'll we'll go for this line and see. They might be like an incarnation. Ah, uh, so I think they are enigmatic. They're getting ley line binding here. Is this uh, a list from the Pro Tour? It is. Okay. Wow. Very interesting. I think against Enigmatic, you just go for the Overlord. All right, well, we're going to get some good counters here, for sure. And potentially even get to hold up Spell Pierce. I think Borrower is a pretty good draw. 
So we discard one and then play pros, discard two, three, draw from pros four, that's seven. And then we hold up pierce. Sounds good to me. I guess that's contingent on finding a land. Uh oh. Please. Oh no. Alright, well, we are shields down, which doesn't feel great, but we do have Brazen Borrower, so if they, like, just slam something here, I mean, we might actually be okay. For example, if they were to do something along the lines of Leyline Binding, put in Atraxa. I'm kind of trying to look at their list to see what they have. We've got a lot of a lot of crazy stuff. This is not an enchanties list I was used to playing. Looks like it's like Esper basically, splashing green or Bant. No, it's like Sultai. Sultai splashing white. For Leyline binding essentially. of autumn there goes our profs I assume or yeah I mean we still have opportunities to potentially trigger some phoenixes I guess though not with this current hand really well that that's one way to do it Cast the Phoenix attack. <coughs> Excuse me. That's right, you have nowhere to run. <laughs> So we get that annul that we were talking about, those negates. I guess their plan is to play these like uncounterable overlords, but I don't know how much we really care. The the removal spells, I mean four fatal push is interesting. They probably have a pretty difficult time triggering revolt. So the push is gonna make our pick locks a bit worse. They might even board out the pushes though, I guess is my thought. I'm pretty comfortable boarding out all my removal spells in this matchup. Uh, I don't really think I care about their overlords at all. And then, do they have any artifacts? So post-board, they're going to have like three high noons. They're going to have Thought Distortion, maybe. Thought Seize, maybe. Rest in Peace. Kind of interested in bringing in these guys. How good are these disputes? They hit Enigmatic, and that's pretty much it. I mean, they hit the Overlord of the Flood Pits, but that's not too valuable. Hitting Enigmatic is very valuable, though. I think cutting a flood maw is fine. I 
I don't really love Ashiok that much. Hardcast Dispute's also pretty real against them. Yeah, I'm really happy with this hand, I think. I mean, the double cruise actually is not ever great to see, but we have a pretty good ability to, to get through these cruises. I need to find an artist talent. It's pretty interesting. Um, like, I could pierce it, and I could also just opt. I think just opting is fine. I think I'm okay with the sleight of hand here. I assume they'll take the, the pierce, but oh, they take a cruise. Okay. That's a pretty surprising choice to me. So I think the pierce is gonna be, it's like almost always very nice. Just getting double thought seized, so they just wanna get rid of my cruises. That would explain it. It's pretty painful though. Gotta be careful doing something like that. We do have three twos with haste in our deck. Phoenix has a really good ability to be very, you know, chippy and scrappy, um, which I like. Up the Beanstalk is just a, you know, prime spell pierce target. Really don't like letting that card resolve turns all their overlords into draw a card, which makes them actually kind of relevant. I think I still want to start with Free the Fae. Part of it is like playing the artist talent could just mean it ends up eating a Leyline Binding or something. Um, Getting a guaranteed value from the free the fair is nice, and then now we could like, we'll shoot our shot and see if we hit a a null or another spell pierce. Okay, cruise is pretty nice too. A nice a nice consolation prize, to be sure. Gotta discard this Sok Heaven's End here. I think just like playing the untapped land is always fine and just like consider looting away the Spire Bluff. Because we'll probably find another untapped land in like the top, you know, 12 cards of our deck or however many we're about to see. Draw Yorion. Okay, so currently they don't have Leyline Binding Mana, so they're kind of just F6, and we uh, have a negate that we'll get to have up next turn. All right, found a Phoenix. Let's see if we can find the Phoenix's friends. Uh, I think discarding Spell Pierce makes sense at this point. We did not find the Phoenix's friends, really. We found. <laughs> Level two artist talent. We have negate up. We have dispute up. 
and then if we draw like a free the fey for example that's pretty nice all right i do think we gotta negate that i'm gonna bin the phoenix i hope that doesn't come back to bite me from like a rest in peace or something but i think they would have played that last turn if they had it so it would have just had to have been a top deck pretty much I think I'd rather play the profs here uh, than the second talent. And I'll just loop away the... Oh, it costs one. Yep, that's right. I remember when I literally said that last turn that I wanted to do that. <laughs> um, I guess I actually could have played the second talent first. Yeah, I should have done that. I take it back. Playing the second talent sounded fine. I could petty theft here. Stock. But I kind of think their play is just going to be like Yorion next turn, which is fine with me for now. Yeah, I should have just probably played the, the second talent, honestly. Because it's only one mana, and I am fine looting the extra card, and then that would probably let me... Nowhere to run is fine. <laughs> yeah, I, I should have played the second time. Picklock Prankster is a great one here. Free the Fey. I mean, I think we really want to bring back these birds here. So much so that I do think we're going to be taking... Yeah, I mean, like, with the Borrowers, we can kind of just unsummon anything that that really scares scares us i think so i'll even ditch one of the borrowers to make sure we uh find that extra spell hmm. okay i'll think about this for a second Yeah, check it out. Our opponent in chat says, I'm a believer in artist talent now. That card bothered me where Shredder I could have beat. Yep. Absolutely. And uh, we we're going to play the pick lock there and then hold up Borrower of Petty Theft, bring back the birds, put a ton of counters on the pick lock and um, put them to five, and then you know they would need a sweeper that I don't think is even in their deck. Yeah, their deck doesn't have sweepers. They have like <laughs> a bunch of cards, but not sweepers.
I'm keeping this hand. I mean, four lands is a bit heavy, but we have Artist Talent. We have a cantrip. I'm not afraid to use the cantrip here. I mean, we just have so, like, almost all of our cards in our deck are just going to be more cantrips or hits that we can uh, leverage with the talent. I almost don't want to run out the talent into their counter. I think I'd rather run this Pross Eidetic Memory out. If it resolves, I'm happy. Uh, and if probably tells me they don't have the, the No More Lies. High Noon. Sure, that's fine. Um, High Noon is pretty ineffective against us. That's the, the truth of the matter. But as long as people want to keep playing it, I am very okay with that. At some point in this game, we're probably going to like Brazen Borrower, bounce the High Noon, and then um, crush them. And they're stuck on lands, too. Yeah. This is... Until then, we'll just kind of bide our time. I mean, even like Channel So Kenzin's a move that we have here. hit their land. That's lucky. Every turn they missed their land was going to be really, really punishing for them. So free the Fae here. Get rid of this axe. And then... I'll take another pick lock. The pick locks are real nice with... Um, real nice with the Prost Eidetic. I think just passing here is the right play. They could have Deluge or Wandering Emperor. Wandering Emperor I'm not super scared of, but Deluge I am. So I'd like to spell Pierce Deluge if I get the chance. I actually think maybe leveling the Artist Talent was also a good play. Ditch the sleigh in here. End step channel so Kenzin seems kind of cool. And there's drawing lands. So lucky. I guess knowing we're only casting <laughs> potentially one spell, maybe I didn't need to do that. Well, now I think they have Wandering Emperor. It's fine, we can fight through the Wandering Emperor. That's what they do have. I guess they can make a 2 2 here, block our 1 1, and then sack the Emperor to exile the other guy. Yeah, it's a good play. I'm going to level 2 this artist talent here. That's fine. Make another samurai. All right, 
announce your high noon. Discard opt. Start with the free the fey here. We're gonna mill our whole deck pretty much and get a ton of birds. Another free the fey. All right, let's consider. I might have taken an untapped land there, but not really super interested in the tapped land. I guess now we have to decide. I'm surprised we only hit one Phoenix. I guess all of the Phoenixes are in our bottom. Oh, one of them got exiled. When did that happen? Huh? No, that's our graveyard. Wait, where's our. No, yeah, we didn't exile a Phoenix. Yeah, we just, they're all in the bottom 20 cards of our deck. Okay. Um, but I still think there's, well, I, mean, I kind of want to leave up Spell Pierce in case they do have like a Farewell in their deck. There's, there's an argument to play Picklock here to get the counters on it. I guess I'm just not really very afraid of this Wandering Emperor here. They think they're the beat down here. They're really trying to, to race. I think it's an interesting, interesting tactic. We'll see if it works. Offer them this fish and see what they say. I'm not going to discard the phoenix yet because I actually might want to keep this phoenix in hand if they have like a Dovin's Veto here. They do have Dovin's Veto. Annoying. Okay. I guess we get a counter on our phoenix and we have to kill the Wandering Emperor now. Do we want to take this hit? I think it's probably okay to fiery impulse the samurai here. I guess I'm thinking, I mean, do they have, what happens if they have a wandering emperor? That's fine if they do that. Are 
we out of ways to bounce the thing, or do we have Odawara still? I think we still have Odawara in our deck somewhere, so that gives us some moves for sure. Our opponent notably didn't have a companion either. Supreme Verdict. Okay, that's what we like to see. I'm just going to cast this Phoenix and attack. It's not much, but it's honest work. Here's a march holding up potentially another no more lies. Ooh, there's the Odawara. So pick lock prankster pass seems like our best line here. Setting up for the the kill shot next turn. Flash Brazen Borrower might even be better than Odawara here. Well, we have three birds that we can bring back, so I think that's Odawara is still the best play. So all three of the bounce spells or bounce effects that we had in our deck have now been used this game, which I think kind of highlights their importance in a match like this. It just takes it from being like a completely devastating effect to an effect you don't really care about at all, honestly, which is pretty impressive. Respond with consider. Okay, that's fine. Uh, I will not pay. All right, we pick up game one. Post board, we get the Banefire. Uh, Prismaris are interesting if they have like portable holes, which they might or might not. We get the Negates. We get the Disputes. Theoretically, we could board a Null for the High Noon. I'm not sure if it's worth it or not. Uh, let's take a look at a blue-white list. Is there any other targets? I guess Rest in Peace is another card they might end up having, so this could be fine. The easy cuts are these. I think Into the Flood Mall, we don't need them when we get the Borrowers post board. Flood Mall is really like mostly a game one card. That gives us eight cuts. I think we don't really need the Prismaris until we see something like legitimate to target, like Portable Hole, uh, basically. Yeah, Null is the card that I'm like, I don't really think is that great. Uh, unless they show us like Rest in Peace and multiple more of the High Noons. I just think overall High Noon is a card we're pretty pretty good against um, with, with the current builds. So 
don't need to overboard the Sentinel when it's not going to counter that much else. Yeah, I'm pretty happy with this hand. I mean, we just get to cast a bunch of cantrips early on. Make sure we're hitting our land drops is, is a pretty big priority. Taking the land there might have also been better. Um, just like if they slam high noon here, we have three cantrips in our hand, but otherwise I'm pretty happy with having the cantrips. So I would assume they don't have high noon. Start with opt. For now, I'll just collect these birds until we can eventually set them all loose with a artist talent. All right, there's an artist talent. waiting to see what they do here, but I'll pretty much fight to protect it, I think. Like, at this point, I'm pretty sure they don't have High Noon. Uh, I don't think they have Rest in Peace or anything. I think they're sitting on, like, a good amount of counters, maybe a March of Otherworldly Light. One's pretty annoying. I think I'm gonna negate it. I might lose my artist talent, but I do get to get rid of one Phoenix here at least, so I'm happy with that. I'll get to bring one bird back next turn probably, and you know I have four artist talents, so it's it's okay if you lose one. Five mana to fairy. Okay, Are they gonna tuck the artist talent or? Plus, plus. Fair enough. I might regret that, though. Unless they're gonna... If they have March here, then that could be trouble. Start with Sleight of Hand. Get another Phoenix. Find Cruise. Pick up. Hopefully they even like cast a spell here that lets us I think get rid of this pros. It's fine. They go for the oh, don't be doing veto. No more lies is fine. Okay. No more lies. Spell pierce. Discard, just consider. Give me an untapped land, please. Voila. Uh, I don't think we need to rush into this next bird. Like, holding up negate, I think, seems more valuable. 
We could free the Fey there, get an extra bird, but let's just focus on taking out this Teferi for now. All right, and our opponent scoops it up. Yeah, I mean, this, this matchup, I think, is pretty favorable for us. Um, Blue-White doesn't always have a lot of moves. They, the, their turns get very awkward from their side, very clunky. Whereas we get to just be casting, you know, all these cantrips, holding up a cheap counter, and then, uh, you know, slowly kind of just burying them with an advantage. Three oh six oh so far. I've not dropped a game. We'll see if we can keep that streak alive. Normally I would end the video here, but we're kind of cruising through these games. If anyone caught that pun. Our opponent has Gigantha. So I think the number one Gigantha deck is Prowess, but there are some other decks. I mean, I think that this hand is pretty keepable on the play. Uh, on the draw, I might be afraid of, of the Prowess deck, but on the play, we have some time to cast our cantrips, you know, find something to, to answer their, their stuff. And if this is uh, not Prowess, which it very well might not be, like Black Weave Cliffs Go makes me think it might be Transmorgify. Uh, either way, we know we don't want to land, so that's an easy choice. And either way, we know we're going to be slamming this Artist Talent on turn two. So this draw is shaping up for sure. <laughs> uh, Reckoner Bank Buster. So this is we're up against the um, the the Transmorgify deck, but Reckoner Bank Buster is maybe the least scary card I've ever seen. When you have an artist talent in play as the Phoenix deck, like they're they're never gonna get you know for six mana if that's what they want to do with their turns while we're doing broken artist talent stuff. It's gonna favor us every single time. Duress. Okay. Well, yeah, Duress is going to get our spell pierce, but that's okay. This matchup tends to be one of our most favored matches. Um, game one, we just have plenty of removal, so it's hard for them to resolve Transmorgify, and we kind of have them covered on the, the fair game plan, too, with our treasure cruises, so that feels pretty strong. 
Uh, post board, we get to bring in more counters, negate, annul, prismari, command to shatter their artifacts and get more values. So, kind of only gets better post board in my opinion uh, as of now. Like you do have to be careful about hearse, leyline of the void, go blank, those types of cards. But you have plenty of counter play and counters and and brazen borrower bounce spell. So overall, it feels pretty good. I'm surprised they didn't take the spell pierce. Maybe they think they can just play through it. Uh, it's between picklock and opt here. The benefit I see to opt is we can probably bring back two birds and hold up spell pierce. But picklock is going to dig us more effectively towards a cruise. I think I'll take the opt and really try to bring back these birds. And I'm going to untap here. This is one of the spots where I do think that makes sense. Consider. Usually I don't really need the second artist talent or I don't find it super valuable. Um, but I mean, that's the great part about it is the card loots its redundant copies away. So that's not actually a, a big problem. It is going to be a problem if we don't find uh, another spell here. I mean, I guess if I have to, I will bounce. Yeah, I'm fine bouncing this Reckoner Bankbuster. <laughs> Even gifting them a fish. Uh, we get our birds, right? So. not really ideal i would have liked to have found like yeah there's a treasure cruise uh a little late i might say but yeah we can't we can't cruise there obviously we do need to have answers for their uh transmorgifies but like next turn we might be able to uh find a prof's eidetic memory and just kill them like if they try to do anything proactive here then if they just play reactively we're going to also get to draw through a good amount of our deck and probably find more phoenixes. So, like, removal spells wouldn't be super productive here for them either. Omnixless, that's completely okay. I don't even know if that's worth spell piercing. I think just, like, holding the spell pierce and knowing that... Uh, If I spell pierce this, they don't have any creature. Okay, I actually, I will spell pierce it. It's fine. Get rid of this fiery impulse. Pretty aggressively digging for the prof's eidetic memory. I guess the downside now is like they could have a torch the tower and um, kill the phoenix we prof's on too. But like, I'm not super favored to find the profs. Happy to lose two life here. And again, this is a spot where I would definitely discard sleight of hand, kind of looking for like our payoff cards. So far, does it tell you how many you've done? So I guess we did cruise twice, eight, ten. Yeah, this is presenting lethal if they don't have a torch to the tower. All right, turn five kill. No biggie. I don't really think Brotherhood's End is where we want to be in this matchup. But I do like having these pile of counters, and I'm pretty happy to just cut our eight, you know, one mana removal spells. Yep, 
pretty pretty straightforward ins and outs. The flood mod, half of me thinks maybe it could be another brazen borrower. The card just consistently performs post board, but there is something to be said for it being one mana. Um, you know when we're trying to do those those phoenix turns, having the extra one mana card is nice. Uh, like on the draw versus prowess, some extra interaction. So. I am, I am a bit torn on that. But I also just think, like, you can board out the Flood Maw and board in the Borrowers in most post-board matches. sees resolves they'll probably grab the artist talent here um, we've got quite a few cantrips so our hand really could be could be anything right now who it's a tough choice, but I think it's just the talent there. Kind of wish that was a uh, me casting opt or consider, but it was not. Dampening sphere. Okay, that I think does literally nothing against us. But let's play. Let's play it smart here. Are we afraid of? might want to be careful of a uh, potential um, fable of the mirror breaker right so holding up a null seems seems smart I guess the flip side is if they discard spell us I'm pretty annoyed Maybe we're bouncing the dampening sphere enough of the time here where we actually did want to um, uh, I don't really think we care about that. Yeah, we probably should have just held shock. We could have bounced the dampening sphere there and been in a better spot. We're still in a fine spot, but we're gonna be a bit slower because of that, so doesn't feel great. I don't know what the heck our opponent is doing, though. What's the question is, do we want to cast the opt here? Maybe like opt discard brazen borrower? That's probably fine. Or we could discard nothing. No, I think discard borrower is good. Top another opt. Sleight of hand, discard this phoenix. Find another phoenix. I guess pick up this picklock prankster.
maybe discarding the borrower was was a bit risky because like then it opens us up to discard spells actually becoming kind of good like we do eventually need to bounce the dampening sphere probably to do anything super crazy Looking for an untapped land, but not finding it. Uh, yikes. Okay. I guess we just pass. Like, we basically. they hit a land we're gonna have trouble bringing these birds back but we can go for a prof's eidetic memory play um oh that also works for them so they have duress take the pierce okay fair enough fair enough there was the land uh, but we would have found prismari command okay uh, so we can go shatter make a treasure to this profs no I think it's good free the fae pick up Because we're not gonna have a counter up, so really we like want to have a bounce spell up to cover us versus anything they might resolve to the table. All right, bring back these birds. The biggest thing I'm afraid of here is like <laughs> extinction event, I guess. Extinction event. They do. Okay. We're okay. Um, like, we have profs. That's why we held on to it here. I guess the right move is just pick lock pass, planning on profs flashing borrower if they do nothing, or maybe having to petty theft something and the next turn we can probably get through nine cards. I mean one, two, three, four. I need like a cruise, I guess. And we've cruised, I think, just Actually, not at all this game. So yeah, it should be pretty straightforward to get through nine cards and find a, find a cruise. All of these things are fine.
somehow we missed. <laughs> That's pretty absurd. Um, Alright, I guess we're just gonna have to pass here. Or attack them, obviously, but... Or are we still incentivized to borrow her? And just go for lethal? Is that lethal? So, so far this turn we played... Consider, that's two cards. Profs. That's two cards. Sleight of hand, that's one. So that's five, six. Yeah, I'm pretty, pretty in for just brazen borrowing here. Uh, I mean, the fatal push gets me either way. I guess it's like, yeah, and torch the tower also gets me either way, so. Might as well just bounce this pilot token then. There's the cruise. I mean, I guess might as well cruise here too. Cause like they could easily just have another discard spell or something. Oh, there's a negate. And if they have to sack the skeleton, then they... Oh, they have a push. Okay. So if they have Transmorg, uh, what do we have? What's our play? Well, we don't have Odawara, Brazen, Brazen. Uh-oh. We're just out of... Okay, we're going to lose. Wait, they targeted us? Did they just draw all their Atraxas? Is that what happened here? I think they drew all their Atraxas. <laughs> we got we got lucky that they drew all their Atraxas. Okay, I might have played too aggressively. I don't know. I don't know. Because like they had to have the push there. Which I don't think it's really clear they do. Maybe the fact that they used the torch right away on the borrower indicates something, but like I also think they probably should have just pushed right away if that was their plan, or as soon as they saw the prof's eidetic memory, they should have pushed because they're just letting me draw towards a potential negate. We have no more phoenixes, but we do have these creatures we can put in, I guess. Yeah, it's actually kind of a, <laughs> a dicey game. I won't lie. This game got closer than I thought. sphere is fine. Draw Dragantha. They're just dead on board. Not on board, technically, but they are dead. Okay. 
four o eight o. Can we get the five o? Say it right down in the comments right now. Subscribe, like. It helps the algorithm apparently. I don't know what the algorithm is. I don't know if anyone really knows what the algorithm is, but um, it would make me happy inside. So thank you. <laughs> hey, buddy. He's trying to run away right now. He hates Phoenix. I don't think this hand is really keepable. We can't cast this cruise anytime soon. A big objective in Phoenix is just use your mana all the time. All right, Lilith 6 is also not keepable, so we'll be going down to 5. Um, they kept 7. We do go first, though. And uh, Phoenix has a pretty good ability to dig its way out of low card hands. Put those two back and start it off with Spiral Canal. Black. Thoughtsies. Uh. Resolves. I don't really think we can spell Pierce here. Um, we need to like try to hit our second land drop. We also want to try to hit. All right, we do hit our second land drop. We also kind of want to hit like an artist talent or something, ideally, or even. Cruise, or just more cantrips. So, yeah, we're just gonna look for that cruise. Get us back to a seven v seven, I guess. Thought sees again. Uh, sure, that's fine. You're at sixteen. Take a consider. That's okay. So they seem to really not care about the Pierce, but. On the other hand, I don't know if we really cared about the cantrips that much. Unstoppable Slasher. Treasure Cruise. we use this fiery impulse and stop the slasher 
It is unstoppable, but we'll stop it temporarily. Oh, yikes, that's really bad. With nothing going on. Your opponent finds Archfiend of the Dross. Okay. Artist Talent is probably step one. I mean, like, now we could top deck Cruz and have something going on. Certainly mulliganing to five and then getting Thought Seize twice is... Ooh. Blood Letter following up the Archfiend. Yeah, I don't really see this ever going very well for us. Cruise. Make it interesting. Okay, free the Fey. Discard this Pierce. We're desperate. Mill some birds. Oh, Cruise. Okay. Cast the Cruise. We didn't mill the birds we needed to mill, though, so that's a problem. We just need to max cast as many spells as we can here. Opt. Uh, all right, last ditch effort consider. I think we need to mill over a phoenix here to even be alive. Nope. So we get one phoenix back, but we're just going to be dead on board. Wait, it's just one phoenix. Right? Yep. Okay. They pick up game one. We say goodbye to our perfect record. The question is in this match of like how many shieldreds do they have? Um, that card is pretty annoying. We definitely want the borrowers. I think we definitely want the props. The talents are good. Pretty much all of our cards, I think, are pretty good, except for probably like one of each of these removal spells. And then Prismari, I think, is maybe decent. Um, I think that we could shave a sleight of hand. And maybe like one more impulse, and let's try like one negate in the Prismari. Prismari to start, maybe. Alright, this hand is much more keepable. Um, they mulligan this time, so already things are looking better. They go down to five. I wonder if they're looking for, like, Leyland of the Void or something. Or if they just had two unkeepable hands. Both are very possible. Mm, probably bin this sleight of hand just because we do want to hold up negate. So it's kind of awkward. Uh, these axes, those are also, are also pretty awkward though. I guess the first axe is fine. I think this is a game where the bank buster is actually somewhat scary. Uh, yeah, the bank buster, well, it looked scary, like after drawing that. Oh, man. Well, we'll let them take the cruise. If they do take the, yeah, I assume they weren't taking the consider, so no reason to cast it first. Oh, do we ever just, no, I think we've been this land. I mean, if we do draw a land, we'll, we will slam the bird, but we gotta be, we gotta have a higher standard for our draw steps than a land there. And with them stuck on two lands, like, I mean, this bird is pretty real. And then back it up with some lightning axes, and uh, we are kind of in business. There's an unstoppable slasher. But we draw. 
an unstoppable arc light phoenix. <laughs> And we're in a race against the slasher. Um, it's a race that we win, so I'll take I'll take a hit here from the slasher. You go into eight. I mean, it's it's pretty good, but I'm just more afraid of like if they have blood letter of Aklazots, letting them just have the free block. Fiend is really annoying. <sighs> Brazen Borrower, maybe? Can I get a. Oh, baby. That's great. See ya, Archfiend. Wouldn't want to be ya. I do think this matchup might be a trickier one just because of the sizing of their creatures. Um, they're pretty well sized against Phoenix. AKA six toughness. It's really annoying. Our best play is basically to like bounce them and then overpower them with Phoenixes or do some crazy stuff with profs, eidetic memory, both of which are very reasonable. Um, lines to to have you know or take okay so go down to f three here that's fine i don't really know what their move is but our screen is fine That we they die with the archfiend like trigger on the stack and all three of these are lethal threats so I guess we can see if we can find like a bounce spell I guess we're just showing them more cards but I'm not really showing them anything relevant all right going to game three pretty quickly here. Um, do I want to make any changes? I don't think so. I think we do really want to max out all our bounce spells in this matchup. The Prismari gives us something to at least kind of hedge against a potential uh, like unlicensed terse or something. Right, this hand seems fine. taking to consider here is probably an option to be honest I almost considered casting it but um, yeah maybe just casting it was good I don't think this profs is really good enough. Let me find another borrower. Like we could top it and slam the profs there thinking, okay, down the line, like we'll play a Phoenix and then put a bunch of counters on it. That might be good. Unstoppable um, slasher. What, what they'll find is that the slasher is actually very stoppable. Looking for a land. We do find a land. Big 
think I'm okay taking a hit from the slasher. Puts you straight down to nine, though. But I really want to use all my mana here with how expensive my hand is. And, like, holding up the negate could be relevant. Or just, like, bouncing something here. I guess we could have... Phoenixes and we have no way to get rid of them. Where is my artist talents? Alright, now I think we do need to kill the slasher. Let's put it on timeout, I guess, is the appropriate term here. Alright, slasher. See you in three turns. That's fine. We have the bounce spell. Let's free the Fae. Pick up a cruise. That's just what we needed. Exiling all my creatures just in case they have a uh, trespasser. I guess they have like pretty good plays here. Just even fire up Muta Vault attack. I have to bounce the demon token and then they level three this ritual chamber, level un other door the ritual chamber, and I am um, just instantly going to seven. Puts a clock on me for sure. The beginning of your end step. So Mutavault is a demon. Oh man, and they have another one. Okay. So it's pretty hard for me to turn that off. Which means we're just on a clock here. We really need a... the artist talent I guess we play it here this is bad this is this is really bad uh, I think we're gonna lose this game oh we can bounce the annex instead but then they just replay it next turn. Did they play a land there? They did play Castle Lockthwain. Okay, that gives us something back into this game, maybe. Them playing the land was, I think, a mistake. Okay, we find Cruise. I think we were just a turn late on all of this like the artist talent and everything and taking that extra damage the mutavolts were too good 
They might have something like go blank here and just, yeah, they just ruin us with a go blank. Not even close. Uh, okay, so I guess our move is like find cantrips, chain them. Yeah, we're down to one. I get that. Prismari. bringing back the birds was actually the better like Prismari command draw to discard to make a treasure and then maybe find like a bounce spell no I just think we're never beating the annex yep alright GG's they got us with the, the ritual chamber annex Card's really strong. It's a rats. We discard. Anything they can duress, but yeah, they, they just have us dead here. All right, so we went four and one. Um, I think the deck, you know, showed it's really, really strong. Um, the mono black matchup is still pretty close, I think. We might be slightly behind against that demon's deck. But overall, I think that this deck is just a really broken deck. I mean, if we had found the Artist Talent earlier, we would have been winning that game three pretty easily. Uh, and it's not like we didn't see a lot of cards. We did see quite a few cards. So um, yeah, I really recommend this deck for your upcoming RC, up upcoming Pioneer Tournament. And uh, I also highly recommend you check out my guide on it. Um, it kind of walks you through how to play this deck, how to sideboard in all the key matchups, and um, we'll get you ready for that tournament. All right, guys, thanks for watching. See ya.